1927, five women known as the Famous Five asked the Supreme Court of Canada if the word person in the British North America Act included women, because only persons were allowed to be elected to the Senate. The answer was no. They then took their case to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council of Great Britain in London, which was then Canada's highest court of appeal. On October 18, 1929, the decision was announced. The exclusion of women from all public offices is a relic of days more barbarous than ours, and to those who would ask why the word person should include females, the obvious answer is, why should it not? Today, we celebrate the determination of the famous five who paved the way for women to equally participate in Canada. So Karina, thanks so much for speaking us today on Persons Day. Um, you certainly have a long resume. You're the first uh, woman to give birth while sitting in cabinet. You're the youngest female cabinet minister. Um, what does Persons Day really mean to you? It's such a special day because I think, you know, in 2022, um, we might not always think about what women weren't able to do in Canada. Um, though I think we are seeing that in terms of women's rights around the world right now with what's going on in Iran in particular. I think it's a big eye opener for um, a lot of Canadians. But, you know, I think particularly Canadian women are quite moved by what they're seeing um, women doing in Iran. But if we go to Persons Day, it's actually not that long ago. It's um, less than 100 it's years. less than 100 yeah. years. That seems like a long time, but mm -hmm. it's not, right? Like the advancement of women's rights has um, happened quite quickly, although, you know, there's still a lot more work to do. But um, we still see it in the House of Commons. You know, mm -hmm. we only have about just over 30% of members of Parliament that are, are female. And I mean, tomorrow is a significant date for you. It's it's your seventh anniversary of being elected into office. What do you think? I mean, looking at the news, we 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 still see female politicians being raked over coals, perhaps a little bit more than their male counterparts for various reasons. What do you think it would take to get parity in the house? Like. To, to bring more women yeah. to like, politics. I mean, I, I talk to a lot of women about being in politics um, and try to encourage them to run and to share what my experience is. And I can say the number one thing that, um, you know, kind of prevent women from putting their names forward is the, you know, attacks, misogyny, sexism that we see particularly online. There's a lot more work that we have to do mm -hmm. to make it um, safe for women to run for office and to feel safe. Um, I think we also have to do more to, um, you know, create environments that are um, responsive to the needs that women have, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you mentioned I was the first woman to a uh, cabinet minister to have a baby while in office. Um, you know, parliament really isn't designed for no. a young woman with a baby. Um, yeah, right. Was it, was it, I think it was the three month mark when you were nursing Oliver in yeah. the house and it was like the media just went, what? <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot more that we can do to make that an environment that is actually inclusive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, through the pandemic, we had a virtual option. We continue to have a virtual option. Um, we have now a voting app so you can a vote from anywhere in Canada. Those are all things that you know, were kind of impossible before COVID-19. And then actually we adopted them and turns out you can do them and you can do their jobs. And and I think, you know, for someone who, a young woman who's thinking about getting into politics, but she also maybe wants to have a family one day, like what I want for her is to not to have to say it's one or the other. Mm -hmm. And so how can we do this in a way that is actually going to be supportive of her being able to have both of those objectives and, you know, meet both of those dreams. And, you know, it's, it's not only good for young women. I mean, that's, that's good for people overall. Mm -hmm. Right. And it shouldn't be that, you know, there are those, you know, major differences and expectations over what, you know, a mom or a dad does. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, that's good for families. You know, it's like, it's, it's not a gendered job. Right. Like no. none of these jobs are, are gendered. Actually, there are no jobs that are mm -hmm. gendered. Right. Um, but I think it is really important to have that example. Well, as as we now know, if you can see it, you can be it, ladies. <laughs> and we're all persons now, less than 100 years later. Uh, but thanks so much for speaking with us today, Karina. My pleasure. Thank you. Happy Persons Day.